Thank you. I am、uh, Nakazawa. I am an anthropologist. When I was enjoying the children's kabuki performance, I was made to think many things. In the anthropology, children and、uh, the drama and dance are deeply related in many festivals, and they have very old origin.、Uh, the, many of them are from the Paleolithic era. And that kind of festival、uh, has survived today. And the, the children, the Kabuki of Nagi town,、uh, may be one of them because it's、uh, a kind of initiation for children. Initiation is, is a very important phase for、uh, anybody、uh, between the childhood and the adulthood. And the, in the Neolithic era, The initiation became very much sophisticated and started to take many forms, but the original form has not changed for the initiation. So, in the initiation, children are given education. It's quite important. In a community, in a tri tribe, Uh, they have respected sets of value s y s t e m and they take time to instill the value system to children, taking, for example, for two years. And the theater and drama play s an important role in many of the initiations. That means, in a normal education process or ordinary process, The social norms,、uh, the publicly attested, is what is communicated to children together with the daily wisdoms. But、uh, when you go to the climax of the initiation ritual, something quite different is、uh, being given to children. In a festival like this, for the community, the most important, most dreadful. A being, the spirit appears at the climax of a festival, and、uh, the, the spirit may be covered with straws, with the strange、uh, costumes, or masks, or、uh, the, the makeups. And before the start of the initiation,、uh, the children enjoy the festival together with other children and the women. And the children would feel that those spirits are something quite dreadful.、Uh, they, uh, these are the supernatural beings、uh, living in the forest. This is what they are told when they are children. But once、uh, children participate in the initiation, those in the process of initiation are actually told that those dreadful spirits are actually、uh, the young adults in the village simply wearing costumes and masks. The most dreadful beings for children and for the village. And if they were told that, that those are taboos that you should never touch. But as you go to the climax of initiation,、uh, children in,、uh, nearing the stage of adulthood are told that, that they are something that somebody created. Masks may remain dreadful, but those wearing those masks. Are one of those young adults in the community. So they now belong to the group of adult foods. And、uh, this would give the existential shock to、uh, the, the children. When they were small, they were told that those are taboos that you should never touch. But once you join the community of adult foods, you Realize that those are something that people or a human simply created. And what is important for the initiation, as you see in the, the tribes in Africa, community in Africa, Arumajiro, like a n i m a l may be eaten in a festival. In a daily life,、uh, you are told not to eat that particular animal because. It looks like an animal, but、uh, it looks like a, a, the insect because it, its body is covered by a, the hard shells, so it looks like a monster. But in the initiation, children are forced to eat a monster against 
the social norms that they were given in the past. The, the norm was about the difference or distinction between animals and insects. But that the, the ordinary distinction uh, is uh, broken during the process of initiation. But by going through the process, what is good and what is bad in the human society, that distinction of the good and bad uh, may disappear when you go deeper into the system. Uh, another important function of the initiation is as follows. Humans and animals are not separated. Actually, they are connected. So human dancers appear in the festival and uh, play as if they are animals, uh, taking uh, the gestures of animals. So in that sense, humans and animals are no longer disconnected. And the message is that humans and animals can be uh, the, the brothers and the, they can communicate and interchangeable. So the mimicry of animals may be the origin of dance. And through the mimicry of animals, what is the message of that education of initiation? Uh, the, the plant and the animals and humans are actually connected. They are hunters, so they know that there is a big distinction between humans and animals. Because humans hunt animals, and animals may also attack humans once they are hunted. And uh, the relationship with the nature and the, the, the music, uh, its meaning is quite different for humans and animals. But at a deeper level, uh, there is a big commonality between humans and animals. What children should learn in the initiation may not be so simple as you might think at the, uh, on the surface. Education is not limited to imparting important information or important principle, like uh, taboos which support the value system. Because in initiation, uh, younger people are told something quite contrary, which may go completely against the ordinary social norms. This is one of the important functions of the initiation which continued from the Paleolithic era. The transfer from the childhood to the adulthood was something quite complex for the, the primeval people. If you become an adult, in order to support your lives, you have to obtain important knowledges and wisdoms but the inner society, at the depth, uh, the, the society is something artificially created by humans, and another way of organizing a society could be possible. This is the kind of deep message that people can get when they go through the initiation. I'm not saying that uh, always uh, initiation was like this, but anthropology conducted many researches on initiation, and in many cases, uh, the anthropologist could discern a very complex meaning. When I was enjoying the children's kabuki, I was wondering why they have to perform a kabuki. Uh, the kabuki is started in Edo era, so for the anthropologist, I would say that the kabuki is very new, but its origin is very old. So. This means during the initiation, uh, time stops, or time may be reversed to the, the uh, mythical or time. Children perform kabuki, and they uh, recite the, the Edo era's language. In that sense, they are going back along the uh, flow of time. And their gestures are quite different uh, in comparison to their uh, gestures in their daily lives. And they perform together with music and the chanting. And the consciousness of the children are brought back to the past. So reversal of time 
is another important aspect of initiation. So people are going back to the primeval uh, era. And in today's education, and uh, that uh, is actually being practiced in the form of children's workshop for kabuki. And it was really surprising to me, and I was uh, pleasantly surprised to find that uh, even today, very old lessons or the way the human experience is organized is still alive in the form of such a practice in our society today. So uh, today, uh, I'd like to speak of uh, art, which includes many elements, uh, uh, performing art and drama also. Uh, I'd like to think of the origin of uh, art. Uh, Art, how does it allow us to go back in time or what is considered right it can be reversed or can be undermined by the work of art? And perhaps you can understand how it happens through my talk. Why initiation is important? Uh, in the long history of the humankind, uh, two million or three million years of history. And actually, the scientists discovered that we can go back even further as the history of the humankind. And Homo sapiens and sapiens appeared at one time in our history, uh, that is, our ancestors. Uh, the structure of a brain uh, was exactly the same with the brain of a Homo sapiens. And uh, the older uh, uh, humans were not able to compete with Homo sapiens, and uh, they went uh, extinct. But Homo sapiens, uh, who used uh, the stones, utensils, began initiation. And in the process of initiation, uh, painting, uh, dance, uh, and music all began at one time. When we think of the origin of art, this is a very important question. Um, uh, those older humans before Homo sapiens were actually had a very well developed technologies and skills. And their language seems to be quite the same with the languages we speak today. Uh, for science and for technology, uh, older humans uh, reached the level of that of uh, Homo sapiens. But when Homo sapiens appeared on the Earth, they borrowed the stones used by older humans. So in that sense, older humans were very well developed in technology and science, but that was not the case with art and religions. Homo sapiens sapiens uh, when our ancestors appeared for the first time, uh, it uh, gave rise to art and religions. So our intellectual capacity to develop science and technology seems to be different from the abilities to give birth to art and the religions, and that appeared uh, in the mindset and mind of uh, the Homo sapiens, and that is called the cognitive revolution. And with the emergence of cognitive revolution, the structure of a brain changed dramatically. And Homo sapiens came to have uh, the structure of the brain, which is the same with our brain uh, today. And in the field of technologies or skills, which were the foundation of the technology and science we know today, uh, they borrowed the technology from the previous uh, humans, uh, but uh, they were able to produce a whole new set of art and religions which didn't exist before. What does it mean? Uh, that is a very important point of uh, the talk I'm going to give. Uh, this is something uh, that today's computer scientists often say. Uh, the work of logic or mechanism of logic used by a computer is 
very similar to the mechanism of a human brain, or it is about the same with a human brain. The von Neumann said that in his book, The Computer and the Brain, and this argument、uh, holds true today. The human brain and highly developed computers. The computer and the brain、uh, function s on a very similar、uh, principle. In the brain, the, what is the thinking process through a neuron, electrical, or the change of the voltage it is、uh, transported? And this flowing change、uh, is transformed into the digital signal. This is the thinking. A process and thinking in a computer takes exactly the same mechanism. And this is what we call logic. The, the human brain tissue is designed in order to operate logic. And the logic based brain, how It's possible that the brain can also generate art and religion. In our brain, is there any specific fields for art and religion? People try to find out, but nobody could find it. In a brain, according to brain scientists, when they look at the structure of the brain, like a computer, The operation is based on logics.、Uh, this is what they can find because that's the neural system. But when we look at our mind, it seems our mind seems to、uh, be moved by something different from logic. And uh, this uh, operation of the mind has a lot to do with the emergence of religion and art. And the anthropologist and the philosopher try to understand. How art and religion h a s been generated. When you look at the, the brain,、uh, the neural science like view, when you look at the tissues of the brain, as you heard about the neocortex,、uh, uh, the principle working in the brain is the same as a computer. The principle shared、uh, with a computer can it produce art? Well, we cannot say yes because if you ask whether the computer can create、uh, art, well, the computer can mimic、uh, what we do, or the, the computer can create some new pieces by combining what humans created. But what we call the artistic creativity may not be available from the logic based. A function of the brain. But how is it? And、uh, the ancient Greek philosophers had some idea. The Greek、uh, philosophy developed、uh, dramatically, and the philosophers tried to understand the mechanism of thinking of humans. And the, the ancient Greek philosophers were the first group of people who tried to understand this phenomenon deeply. And they thought that, that there s e e m s to be two sets of functions、uh, in the human brain. One of them is logos. And logos、uh, is related to words like logic. So they thought that, that there is a logos working in a brain or, or in an intellect. And etymologically, logic or logos means arrange things one has gathered before one's eyes or organized by arranging them things. So, giving orders to things or gather things before one's eyes. Gather, arrange, and give order. That is what logos meant. And the function of the logos. And the brain's tissue are deeply related. Electrical signals go through the、uh, neuron,、uh, they convey from one neuron to another sequentially, and information 
uh, received by the sensory systems are uh, arranged in a linear sequential fa fa fashion. So thinking based on the uh, neural system are uh, likely to induce the function of logos. And uh, what you can do in a computer is quite similar. Electrical signals are sequentially conveyed through the neuron uh, using the synapse as a relay. And in a computer, there is a clock incorporated in the CPU, and the clock ticks the temporal order, and the streams of uh, information are arranged. So the computer gather information before its own eye and then arrange them in a particular order. So uh, working of logos is uh, the, the one of the most basic functions in the brain, uh, the gathering things, arranging them in a linear fashion. The languages of humans uh, has a very deep relationship with the function of logos. I am saying something. What I'm doing is uh, the putting words in the order of time, and those who receive my uh, words would uh, understand the meaning here. You use logos because there is a stream of words arranged linearly. But the ancient Greeks knew that there is something else in the human mind. Logos is an important function of the human brain and the mind, but there is another important function in the brain and the mind that is called lemma. Usually, lemma is understood as the auxiliary, the preposition, but in ancient Greek, philosopher used the term of lemma, meaning grasping the whole, all, what, all at once. Logos is about arranging, giving order, and the lemma is a capability to grasp the whole. And the dysfunctional lemma in the mind gives you a completely different ways to understand the world in comparison to logos. According to Lemma, the grasping everything in the world is possible. According to Lemma's uh, intellection, uh, the everything is interrelated. All the parts are interrelated in the reality. And uh, by intuition, Lemma understands the parts which are all interconnected holistically. Logos and lemma for ancient Greek uh, were uh, both were understood. But the ancient Greek philosopher thought that the logos is more important. Lemma gives you the capability to understand the world as a whole. But the the, they said that the logos is the way to understand the most accurate understanding of the world because this is because the language works on logos, the subject and the, the verb and the object. You need to follow a particular order of words in a language in order to understand the phenomena in the world rationally. And they thought that the, this was the only the correct way to perceive the world. Lemma, that is the grasping of the whole by intuition, although the ancient Greek philosophers were aware of it, but the lemma was given an inferior position. But if you go to the East, Asia or Asia, in the world of Asia, a lemma was thought to be more important. Logos-based perception, of course, is important, 
But in order to have the understand of understand the essence of the word, Asian philosopher thought that the lemma is important. When you look at all the ancient philosophical traditions in Asia, lemma is given the highest importance. And the Buddhism gave the highest priority. According to the Buddhism, a logos based understanding can uh, make you understand only part of the world. But the real truth, truth of the world, has a structure different from logos. And the human mind that can really understand the truth of the world needs something other than logos. So, according to the Buddhism, the remma were the most important principle. Lemma was understood as engi in India or dependent origination in Indian philosophy. Logos uh, is understanding of the phenomena uh, with causality in a linear manner. But according to Lemma, this is a grasping of the whole uh, all at once. So all parts in the whole are interconnected, and the whole universe are in a movement. This is how the world is uh, the perceived by Lemma, and this is what they call Engi, or dependent origination. So, According to the dependent origination, uh, the, all the parts are interconnected in the universe, and the whole universe is in uh, movement. So according to Buddhism uh, understanding of uh, dependent origination, the opposition between the right and the left that kind of understanding is denied in Buddhism. Any answer, any solution is related to all other solutions, and all are interconnected, moving as a whole. I, who is standing in front of you is made up of everything in the past which uh, flew into me. And uh, what's inside uh, in me right now uh, is expanded into the future like a big net thrown from me. So I am the instantaneous uh, the point uh, which is both connected to the past and the future. So according to the Buddhism, the world cannot be grasped with logos. Well, what logos can understand about the world is only a part of the, uh, the whole nature of the world. The, the major intellectuals uh, with uh, the Buddhism uh, tradition find it quite uh, difficult to accept uh, the Western uh, philosophy, which was based on the causality. Uh, the Western philosophy and the sciences are about the causality and the, the deterministic uh, the capability of sciences based on the information. However, the, uh, the Japanese intellectuals in Meiji era, uh, immediately after the Edo era, still maintained the, the Asian tradition. On the surface, there may be the causality of causes and effects, but in the world, there are something that remains latent in the world. And all of those latent things stay in ourselves and they form a big net and the, the, the big net uh, is uh, in a motion. So 
when the Japanese intellectuals encounter the Western logos-based way of thinking, they suffered from the opposition between the lemma and the logos、uh, traditions, and they had to work very hard to overcome this,、uh, the basic opposition between logos and lemma. And I would like to just mention one scholar, Minami Kata Kumakus.、Uh, he tried to conceptualize a new form of science based upon dependent origination. And then soon, Kyoto school scholars、uh, tried to restructure、uh, modern sciences based upon、uh, dependent origination and began to think of Japanese school of、uh, thoughts. A very ambitious attempt indeed. So, for the Japanese people, the question of logos and lemma、uh, is still a very fundamental question which is nagging us, the Japanese.、Uh, for instance, uh, today's computer science or brain science,、uh, this also poses a very important question, but at the same time, it has a lot to do with the art, which is the main theme of my talk today. Artistic creation. Uh, has to depend upon dilemma based logic and intellection. That is essential for an artistic creation. And、uh, it would be very interesting if I could go through some salient examples, but I have to rush for the interest of time today. You know, in Buddhism, when one thing is manifest in this world, Observable in this world, and for、uh, there are so many elements which is behind that manifest event, and they are latent,、uh, they are not seen in the world. And what is evident or manifest, and what is latent, the combination between the of the two is what makes up this world. Something which is latent today may become manifest and come to have a certain meaning. For instance,、uh, you listen to Bob Dylan's music when you were young,、uh, Professor Yamagiwa one of, is one of them, and for him,、uh, that experience was latent for years and years. But at the, when he talked to new students in uh, the uh, ceremony, uh, that experience came to hit the surface and it began to take certain meaning. If it didn't come to the surface and Remain latent, then forever and ever, Bob Dylan's song、uh, would stay latent quietly. We do not know when it may erupt to hit surface, but it, it may remain latent. And when something becomes late, manifest, then it might have a certain impact. On him or on the world. But once something, something becomes observable, it may go back to a latent state once again. And there could be such a cycle of manifestation and latency. And that's one basic thinking in the Buddhist tradition. So if you might take an analogy, something like Manifest in the world can be expressed as the real numbers. If I take a math analogy, and those what are latent can be likened to imaginaries. So, all elements which exist in the world today、uh, are made up of combination of real numbers and imaginaries. And imaginaries thus are directly connected to. Uh, this manifest world, they may not come to a manifest event soon. However, x plus i y,、uh, which is the basis of what we learn in mathematics,、uh, that is. A complex number,、uh, which is the combination of、uh, imaginary and real number,、uh, is the basis、uh, of this world. And the relationship、uh, between the real number and imaginary changes all the time、uh, in this world. And what was imaginary a moment ago 
may become a real number and become manifest. And what was real may become an imaginary. A repetition of such a cycle uh, is what makes up this world. So we, our beings, or I as a being, has an imaginary in ourselves. And the real part of us is on the surface, and that is recognized as I, and that's how people look at me. However, every being has a latent world, a world of imaginaries. And imaginaries affect the whole, and the whole move being made of the real and imaginary. You now I have given you a manuscript or handout, and the organizer didn't want me to discuss a difficult example, but uh, Buddhist philosophy dependent origination uh, is expressed in such a simple mathematical formulation uh, a11, a12, a13, etc. Uh, you can see on the top, and the whole moves in motion, and this is in a sense a combination of logos and lemma. And each element, such as A11, A12, uh, all of them a, a complex numbers. So what is on the surface and observable, and what is latent and is hidden, may go back and forth with each other. And something latent uh, is uh, related to the whole. And that is uh, the world view by Buddhism. So this combination of elements, uh, rows and the columns, uh, those elements may change instantaneously, but at the same time, uh, they maintain identity. And uh, this is how Buddhism sees the world. Uh, so what you see in this handout is a matrix and uh, we can look at the world like a matrix. And again, this is how Lemma uh, conceives the world. But in order to understand each element, we use uh, the logos-based intellection for analysis. So, the world is conceived as an unlimited matrix. Uh, that is how, in Buddhism, uh, the concept of original de uh, dependent origination sees the world. And uh, this is taken from uh, Dr. Shinjiro Tominaga's book on quantum uh, mechanics. Heisenberg uh, developed uh, the quantum mechanics, and uh, this is a matrix which uh, is shown in the very uh, introductory part of the theory. And so it seems that the Buddhism way of thinking and uh, uh, the matrix um, uh, or a quantum uh, uh, mechanics are very similar with each other. And in the sense that that is so because uh, the quantum matrix it takes a concept like a dependent origination, uh, which is a very important concept of uh, Buddhism. And actually, uh, for our science, such as transistors and mobile phones, all kinds of uh, information technologies are uh, uh, functioning based upon uh, quantum mechanics, and they are based upon matrix uh, mechanics. And the essential part of uh, science of matrix mechanics has a very deep similarity with the notion of dependent origination of Buddhism. Uh, that was noticed long time ago already, but uh, they can also be exp 
plain, though expressed in a easy to understand manner. A Buddhist way of、uh, thinking and the quantum mechanics way of thinking are very similar with each other.、Uh, a complex number structure shown in elements change over time, but at the same time, they keep、uh, the unity of the whole. Information is sent over to the world instantaneously. In our world,、uh, in a sense,、uh, it relates to certain connection between the humanities and sciences. And humanities are actually deeply related with natural sciences. But in order to understand the similarities and differences, We need to pay attention to the important differences between Lemma and Logos, two kinds of logics humans employ. Now, about art. Art is produced、uh, through the working of the Lemma, for instance, music. Original music perhaps goes back to the Paleolithic era, an initiation that was a practice、uh, deep in a cave. People in the Paleolithic age performed and liked to perform initiation rites in a cave, a very big cave. And it's like a womb of a mother's body, and there was a big empty space inside a cave. And they vocalized and they danced and they left drawings on the rock wall. And as we may experience in today's life, once we enter a cave, and suppose that、uh, the same pitch was sounded for long, then that will give rise to a natural、uh, harmonics,、uh, one octave higher than the foundational pitch、uh, through the production of the natural harmonics. Uh, people came to recognize、uh, the difference between、uh, the foundation note、uh, and a pitch one octave higher, and they recognized the identity between the two pitches or two sounds one do and、uh, the do one octave higher are identical. So, natural harmonics、uh, are produced, but at the same time,、uh, four、uh, perfect fourths and a perfect fifth are also produced. In other words,、uh, the basic of a music pentatonic scale、uh, was recognized、uh, inside a cave. Then, the first recognition of the music. Started with the recognition of the identity between a certain fundamental do and one do, one octave higher. And when they were stand, sounded together, they gave rise to a chorus which sounded very comfortable and pleasant in human eyes,、uh, human ears. So when one sound is hit, it produces. Chord naturally, but another pitch or sound cannot be heard. It's latent, but、uh, the sound we hear supports the presence of latent sound. Do, mi, and so, and those pitches one active higher. Once a certain note is sounded, you also hear a latent、uh, sound,、uh, an octave or two octaves higher、uh, in our mind. And I mentioned that、uh, the complex number is important for mathematics. And if any sound is hit, and when that is heard by a human ear, it also Gives rise to latent sound,、uh, which belongs to the same scale of music.
music in the human mind. And when me is sounded, uh, then uh, do will go back to the latent field. So music uh, also has a matrix structure. The important part of a pleasure of music is chord. And the chord sounds pleasant in human ears because of the function of lemma. Uh, based upon uh, the foundation pitch, one octave higher and one more octave higher, a different relationship between sounds it can be produced and that is made of the combination of the latent and the manifest sounds uh, and when they move together they form a music and this is something uh, Mozart often wrote in his uh, letters. When I uh, uh, think of or hit upon a certain music, uh, I hear chords in my mind. Uh, I am able to hear all the chords once I hit upon a certain line of melody, and I need to write all of those chords on the notes. But it's just a pain to write it down in the form of notes. X and I, Y, uh, the sound which has a complex structure, number structure, is understood by Mozart in a comprehensive, holistic manner. And although he didn't, didn't like it, he had to write them down in the form of scores. And uh, he supported his own life by making money out of this. And I think that's a very important point of uh, creating a piece of music. Uh, music is not simply the combination of notes. Uh, uh, music uh, is a present is a form of matrix. Uh, when the whole matrix, the whole moves, how can a music composer uh, use a logos intellection so that uh, the whole uh, motion of the sounds can be written down in the form of notes? Uh, it seems that I have already gone over my time, so I have to be quick. Another example. Uh, this is about a painting. Uh, in your handout, you can see the paintings by Cezanne, uh, Mont uh, Saint Victoire, a variation of them. Uh, in the top left, you can see the photograph of this mountain. Uh, Cezanne has produced a variation of this mountain in his paintings. Why did he do that? He wanted to capture the moment how this mountain arises. And he thought that it was important for him to capture what is not seen to understand the whole of the mountain. And the photograph showing this uh, mountain was not the whole of the mountain for him. Uh, this shows a certain presence of this mountain in this world. But in order to capture the whole of it, uh, he has to capture uh, not just the surface of what he sees today, he needs to look at latent, the hidden elements of uh, the mountain he saw, uh, the space of imaginaries. Uh, otherwise, he will not be able to be finished with painting this mountain. So this seems to suggest that the painting is also an art of matrix, uh, what is uh, manifest and what is latent, uh, exchange with each other uh, and uh, make the whole. And for him, it was important to uh, take out what was latent, uh, and uh, it was completely different from taking a photograph. Uh, again, here we see a sharp difference between uh, the working of Lemma and the working of Logos. 
our Earth world uh, will be uh, more uh, dominated uh, by a logos-based logic with the development of computer science. Uh, but in this world, how can we demonstrate more uh, the other part of our capability, that is the lemma-based capability. And I believe that that is going to be a very important challenge for the world of art. Uh, art is a very important domain where we can demonstrate uh, uh, our lemma capability. But as we see with example of uh, quantum mechanics, a lemma-based logic logos uh, can lead scientists to a scientific breakthrough. So lemma uh, is uh, important intellection uh, for our future. I'm sorry that I have gone over my time. Thank you very much for your attention.